Oh, welcome back to 3D Printed Soup, the channel which is one year old. That's right, I've been doing this for an entire year. My life has not been wasted. And as it's a birthday, I have bought my channel a birthday present. A resin printer. So, let's get this set up and see if resin is as good or better than its filament brothers and sisters. That's coming right up. This is the Creality LD002R. Really rolls off the tongue, doesn't it, that name? Uh, it is a resin printer. It's got a very, very small, sleek form factor. Uh, it stands fairly tall, but it's uh, got a very, very small footprint, so it fits pretty much anywhere. You can see it here next to my Ender 3, and yeah, it's, it's much, much smaller. The rather fetching orange hood serves dual functions. One, it's orange, so it stops the UV lights getting in and uh, messing up your print bed. And two, it's nice and thick and airtight so that you don't get the horrible smell. Now this is combined with this. This is an active carbon filtered fan. Now when you're doing 3D printing with this kind of resin, you get a horrible resiny smell. But a combination of the orange hood and this carbon fan means that you don't get the nasty smell attached to it and it keeps your room smelling daisy fresh and you don't have to worry about breathing in lots of those nasty toxic chemicals. That said, I'd make sure you're in a well ventilated room. The print surface is small but uh, it's perfectly functional and perfectly serviceable and this goes up and down into the resin basin at the bottom. Now the print surface can be removed with the use of this simple knob, you just give it a turn this loosens it up and it should be able to be removed very, very simply with no effort. This makes it very, very easy for you to get to the printer base and uh, give it a good scrape and remove any kind of excess off there and remove your prints easily. Although I did notice there's a little bit of rusting inside the uh, screw head. So yeah, I think I'm going to have to basically maybe get some replacements of those and maybe complain about that. The resin reservoir removes very, very easily with the turn of the two screws on the side once those are loosened you can just remove the reservoir straight away and this reveals the screen underneath. It's around six inches diagonally and that's pretty much the maximum amount of size you can get a print done. This basically just fires UV rays into the resin layer by layer so they harden and make the print. The machine is powered on by this nice button on the front and yeah I like this button it feels nice and chunky and it's very very tactile. The touch screen is bright and uh, it's fairly responsive when you tap it and the user interface is very very simple you just touch takes you through to the section you want to and you just keep tapping to get to where you want to and the buttons work absolutely fine and I found no delay with pressing them and there's no issue with the buttons not depressing so yeah very impressed with that well done Creality. Now I've seen a lot of videos online claiming this thing comes factory balanced and, and factory leveled but I don't believe that for a second and I would really recommend just taking the time to go for the leveling procedure before you start your first print just to be safe. Now as a one up on the Ender 3 this thing actually has a full USB socket attached to it so no more micro USD much much better. Once you've inserted the USB it's just a case of hitting the print button and you can see all the prints, even with a picture showing you what you're actually printing. Fantastic. I much prefer this to the guessing by file names that you get with some other printers. So yeah, I'm very, very happy with the way this thing functions, but all these aesthetics and software and little nice bits and pieces are great, but until you actually see this thing printing, you're never gonna know if you want one. So let's give this a go and see what I can actually print and see if the Actual print quality is as good as most resin printer manufacturers make out resin can be. Let's give us a try.
Okay, so yeah, I'm very, very happy with the way that uh, that resin printer performs. And yeah, the first print, a bit marbling to it because I didn't know about uh, tilting prints and how to basically not tilt them completely over and just do it at about a 30 degree angle. But with the second print, which was the test print that comes on the USB stick that comes with the printer, this little uh, sort of cartoonish uh, Japanese style uh, anime character. And yeah, she's come out beautifully. There's not a single layer on her. She is smooth and she is high def. And yeah, I am very, very, very impressed with this printer. And yeah, hopefully when I start basically getting into my stride, my miniatures will come out as nice looking as this. And by the look of it, it just requires a little bit of extra work and a little bit of extra preparation, which basically you don't have to do with FDM printers, but with uh, resin, there's a little bit of extra work to prep them, but once that's been done, you don't really have to do any other work. It's not like having to calibrate it every five minutes or arrange the layer height. It's all about the software with resin printers, so I'm gonna get used to that. Okay, so thanks so much for watching. Once again, one year, and that's over 52 videos, especially one video a week for the last year, which is no mean feat. Let's celebrate that by giving me a sub, clicking the notification button. Next week, 3D Dungeon Tiles. A couple of months ago, I did a few prints of 3D Dungeon Tiles, and you guys like them so much, I'm gonna do some more. I found a couple of companies online where I have backed under Kickstarter and under Patreon, and I've got a few great samples. So we'll have a look at those and see which are the best 3D Dungeon Tiles for your Pathfinder and D&D games. Thanks for watching, and make sure you stay safe. Thanks for watching 3D Printed Soup.